So he said, you know, someone rented it and then three years go by. I haven't really checked anything. By the way, he has a man he had a management company in the UK. I don't know how that's even like why he would even do that. Whoa. So management it's like company is normal, but to be in the UK Totally. Okay. Like number one, you're thousands of miles away. How can they and do you're anything? now your management company is even is also thousands of yes. miles away from Carl. It just didn't make sense to begin with, okay. right? So he's like, I for whatever reason, he's a wealthy dude, right? Mm -hmm. So he's like, for whatever reason, I decided to check on the finances in my bank account in San Diego. Mm -hmm. And I, I looked at it and I haven't been getting paid rent for three years. He was out like, you know, he did the math. He's like, I'm, I'm owed like $71,000. Oh my God. Hi, everyone. Welcome back to Behind the Lockbox. I'm Stephanie Zalowski. Cam is homesick today, but she will be back in a couple weeks, so we wish her well. Um, today, we have Josh Gaylis with us. Howdy, howdy. Hi. So we met Josh back in our Pacific Sotheby's days. That's right. My God, feels like eons ago. Totally. We've been friends for, what, eight years now? Something like that, yeah. It's wild. Like my sister from another mister. I know. <laughs> I remember we used to sit up on that little like ledge and like do totally. our work and like look over. Yeah, anyway. Okay. Uh, so Josh has been in business for 10 years. He is the founder of the Gayless team with our very own brokerage compass. He isn't a dad. No, hold on. Whoa, I got excited. He is a dad to an adorable little boy, Jackson, who just turned one. Yeah, it's crazy. I Time's flying. I can't believe that. It really does fly. And I know you have stories for us because we've been plotting this little meetup for totally. quite some time now. So Josh, welcome to Behind the Lockbox. Thank you for having yes, me. Yes, thank you I'm for honored. being here. Okay. So where do you want to start? Because like you called me yesterday and you're like, okay, sure. I have like three stories that I think I want to share. I think the 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 main one to you start, start with, with a banger. Okay, I have to. Okay, go I for have it. To. Please do. So I was licensed in, at the end of 2014, so okay. about 10 years ago. Okay. And I think it was 2015. I got a call from my family friend. Okay. And he's like, hey, listen, I have this. I have and you're this, born and raised here in San Diego. Born and raised so, in San Diego. Yes. Okay. Yeah. So I have this this family friend give me a call which everyone wants, right? When you get a license, you want someone to call it's you. It's working. Right? Yeah. So it's like, it was like my first taste of like a lead. Yeah. Right? So yes. he gives me a ring. He's like, Josh, listen, I have this, this really close friend of mine who lives in South Africa okay. and he owns a property here in Carmel Valley and he's trying to sell it. Okay. And you're like, ding, the, ding, ding. oh, totally. Yeah. Right? I mean, I'm super thankful that he, yeah. that he thought of me and totally. it, like I said, it gave Trusted me my first right away. Taste. You're like, I got this. 100%. Yeah. yeah. And we hop on the phone. We do a little conference with him. Okay. Right. So he, I won't mention his name, but he goes, he goes on the phone. He's like, listen, guys, don't think like I'm crazy or laugh at me or anything, but oh God, I rented the property out like four, like four years ago. Okay. Right. So it's been an investment but property he, for him because he's now again, living back in South Africa. Totally. Okay. He bought it and forgot about it. That's, that's kind of what it was. And okay. he's a very wealthy dude. Okay, so, fair. and you'll understand later <laughs> on in the story. So he said, you know, someone rented it and then Three years go by. I haven't really checked anything. By the way, he has a man. He had a management company in the UK. I don't know how that's even like why he would even do that. Whoa! So management it's like company is normal, but to be in the UK, totally. Okay. Like number one, you're thousands of miles away, how can they and do you're anything? now your management company is even is also thousands of yes. miles away from Carmel. It just didn't make sense to begin with, okay. right? So he's like, I for whatever reason. He's a wealthy dude, right? Mm -hmm. So he's like, for whatever reason, I decided to check on the finances in my bank account in San Diego. Mm -hmm. And I, I looked at it and I haven't been getting paid rent for three years. He was out like, you know, he did the math. He's like, I'm I'm owed like $71,000. Oh my God. He had not checked on, and the management company, aren't they supposed to keep track so we'll of get So we'll get into that. Account? So he... I mean, I love that he's so wealthy that like... Well, it's he, a good problem to have, Yeah, he right? was like, shit, I haven't paid in... Because it wasn't like he was expecting that income to come in every month for totally. bills. Whoa. It was crazy. And this is wow. like, I'm fresh off the boat, just got my license. <laughs> I got a refer... You know, it wasn't like my 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 brother's buying a house and I just have to right. show him around. Right. It's like, right. hey, we have this, this potential listing for you. Right. But... Um, but he hasn't been getting paid rent. He doesn't know what's going on with this property. You're like, throw me in the trenches and he's like can you guys just like figure, figure out, out what's, what's going, going on? on like i don't know if someone's living there yeah like, is the guy there is he on? alive like okay because he rented it the management company rented it to to a tenant okay. but for that one year he was getting paid and everything okay. and and then he stopped checking it you know he's a busy right. guy and he's, he's like, wealthy whatever. whatever and he 
kind of thinks he has a management company there. So he's like, it's all running. I'm, no news is good news. Exactly. Well, maybe not. Mm, not this time. Okay. So we go we go over to the house. I go with my family friend. I'm, okay. I'm dressed nice. He's dressed kind of casually. Sure. I, I feel like I'm like a bounty hunter at this point. I'm like, <laughs> what am I doing? Like, Dog I'm like the bounty trying hunter. To, totally. <laughs> so we, we go to the, the place. It's in um, Andalusia. I don't know if you know. It's right by Carmel yes. Valley Middle School. Yes. It's like right by the school there. Yes. So we go. We Which knock, is a great area. Totally. Super Amazing. nice, family friendly. Like, oh, yep. 100%. Yep. So we go there. There's lights on. Okay. In, in like, you can see. And is see, this a townhome, apartment? It's a townhome. Home. Okay. It's a townhome. So okay. it has attached garage. Lives like a single family, but okay. it's a townhome. Okay. It's attached on, I think it was on one side. Okay. So we get there and the lights are on. We're like, holy shit, someone's living here. And they have been probably for three years, right? Oh. And is it even the same tenant they rented to? Like, who the hell knows at this point? Right. Is he subletting it? Like, what's, right. what's he doing? Because right. there's no way for three years the lights are on and they just stayed on. Right. 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 So we knock. We ring the doorbell. We stay there for about five minutes. We're kind of, you know, scooping around, Looking lurking. the window. We like, see someone. Nothing. Right. So we're like. Lights are on. Lights are on. No one's answering. We're like, door. we know someone's someone lives here. Yeah. I leave a note. Okay. And, I, and basically we come up with like a concoction. Like, what are we going to say? Yeah. In the note, we say. We know you are living here, and we see you through the door. We right. know you're here. We hear you moving around. And for three years, you have not paid rent. You have two options. One, you could call me back, yeah. and we could, you know, be like work civilized men out. and work something out. Right. Or two, we're gonna call the sheriffs and and have them drag you out. Of right. Here. Right. So two days go by, and I get a phone call from this gentleman. Okay. And he, we we don't go over it too much, but he's like, hey, listen, like. There's been a, this is crazy what's happened. I feel really bad, but come meet me on like a Tuesday. It was like two days after that. He was out of town. Okay. Come meet me on a Tuesday and we'll discuss it. It's like, okay, Discuss it? No, bro. You've got two happen? options. So I'm like, like going on Amazon trying to get bulletproof vests and like getting my pepper spray <laughs> and everything. You don't know who you're meeting. I don't know we what. We've talked about this so many times that the situations we find ourselves in, like it's we're meeting complete strangers. Like we have no idea who we're meeting. 100%. The only Wild. positive in all of this is that it was in Carmel Valley. I mean, true. But, it's not like it was but, the hood. But, but crime still, happens anywhere. It and it's like, you don't know what to expect when 100%. you're, you know. And it's someone who hasn't been paying rent. What if he's like aggressive yeah. or i mean the fact that the fact that he answered he called me and was he seemed like a genuine dude and he felt bad about the situation right. gave you some reprieve to be like okay this is totally. gonna be okay yeah so we get there did you go by yourself or with the no i went friend? with him oh okay. god no no i went with him i was like I, dude i, I need you. By myself. if i okay. if something happens to me you're like you, put you this vest tell. on i got a piece of exactly. bulletproof vest put a helmet on you guys show up like swat team and yeah. he's like I just am trying to pay you rent. Right. Anyway. I said, listen, if anything happens to me, you know my parents really well. Just tell them, you know. I, I love them and I the live a good job, life. First job, I, I tried real estate. <laughs> it didn't work out. It didn't work out. Right. That's so funny. So we get there and we're sitting in the living room. We introduce ourselves. Okay, so you go to the house, not yeah, like yeah. Starbucks or no. No, we like, go to his to place. House. Okay, okay. And we sit down. We're like, what the hell happened? And he's like, so listen. So he has a management company, as you guys maybe know, in the UK. Right, that he didn't even know who my client was. It was just sure, with the management he would never, company. He right, right, right. So he said for a year I was paying rent, which okay. we knew right. from the, from you know what what the client was saying. Right, and then all of a sudden his checks were bouncing. So he came. He started calling the management company. The lines the lines dead. So the management company just like closed shop and didn't let the owner know. Didn't change it to another management company. What? Nothing. And I mean it's my client's fault, right? For like. Just letting this go under wraps, like right for own, never checking on anything. Like you right. gotta check. when you own a property, a management company is not there to like checking make sure you're getting months. paid. It's like just yeah, make sure your finances are, are, are in order. Right, great right. problem to have. Wish I was in issues. Totally, <laughs> right? but for everyone out there, like even if you have a management company, you still need totally. To I mean, I've got stories of horrible. I mean, there's. It's insane. It's insane. It really is. Where you're like, what good are you? You're supposed to be like doing this for the client, and it's like atrocious. The thing, things that we have found. Totally. Anyway. So we sit. We sit down. So the, so the tenant was trying to pay rent. He was trying, which is what he says. But we come. It, and honestly, it checked out that he was trying to. But okay. that management company was. It was that was the reason. So he had basically nowhere to pay rent. He had nowhere to pay rent. But like, I mean, what does he? What do you do? Right. Wow. I guess like, I mean, you don't stay there. Right. He could have done something. But he could have. What he could have done is he could have contacted someone to find out who the owner, like a real Probably. estate agent or an attorney or, or an something attorney. like, what and do I do here? Thing you can do for also hot tip for anyone. Um, Love hot tips. Hot tip. You can in most states, you can actually pay rent to the court and the court will hold it for you. 
So my brother actually withheld rent from an apartment years ago in Columbus, Ohio, because they weren't fixing the AC like they said. They were going to the heat or it was something like that. And he was refusing to pay the management company. He's like, I'm not paying you guys rent till you wow. fix this. So he went down to the court and paid it so that he was not in any trouble way right. trouble. Or and I almost illegal. had to do that years ago at a rental as well because I had a leak in the roof and it was like not being fixed and I threatened right. that. And then right. sure enough, it got fixed the next day, you know? Crazy. So there's things you could do. Now, not everyone knows about that. Totally. But like, I didn't like, even know about it. Like be a little, like just be like, who owns this property? I got to find someone. My child. Like I would be freaking out that like. Well, was someone's going to come knock on my door yeah, and, and arrest me. me or a something for not arrest me. Rent. Exactly. Was like I should after a year I was like this is He was bold. like exactly. He, that's so he, that's what he thought. So he was he like was at fault. I mean he, he was. Yeah. I mean he is at fault. Yeah. He had to do the right thing, but he was probably like I, mean, I tried. No one's coming. I tried. Right. No one's coming right. after me. I'm just going to I pay the utilities. But again, what would have stressed me out is knowing that I had $75,000 exactly. back. Like where where was that money that he, he That was that was being in his mind was just being brushed under the rug and he'll deal with it when it happens. Oh, oh my right? god, that stresses me out thinking about that now. Anyway, okay. And it comes it came back to bite him, right? <laughs> oh, so I'm we sure. so, so we gave him we we didn't really give him many options, right? And when someone's squatting like he definitely tenants have have rights, in right? California. He yes, didn't not all he states, didn't know but... his he could have played hard hard to get. But he he could have know. been Totally. Which so we said, you listen, you owe seventy one thousand dollars to our client. So my and we, you know, we were going back and forth with mm -hmm. the client in South Africa. Mm -hmm. He's like, listen, it's obvious as shitty as it is, like I still want to like help him out. Oh, and nice. and help him out, like put him on a payment plan. Like you don't need to write me okay. a check for seventy one grand. Okay. Maybe I mean And it sounds like that? your client also was like, Shit, I should have totally. checked in, the management was, company was gone. They didn't tell me they were 100%. out of business. So like he sees, at least he's a good guy and he saw like both sides of it. Absolutely. You know? So that's So we, we say, listen, there's $71,000 that's that's owed to to my client. And we were trying to, he was like, yeah, maybe we could do like, you know, a thousand, you know, a month or 2000 a month or I don't know. Mm -hmm. They were coming up with some sort of plan. Mm -hmm. So And then we said, also, we need you out in like 48 hours. You need to get out because we're, our plan is to sell this house. Okay. Yeah. Right? You, wanted to sell you it. probably could have push back and, and is that whatever. why he contact is that why he started looking into this to begin with because he's like oh i should probably just sell this i'm not there totally anymore. he saw the market had gone up he okay. bought it for like 400 grand okay. you know it was worth around six is what okay. we were thinking he's, he's like in south africa he's like let's just sell it okay that, totally so he looked and, and also he's like oh my god like I, no one's been living there it's like it's just the appreciation it's not like i've been getting income right so he's like let's sell, sell it. it and let's look into let's at least like hire Right. You know, an agent or, an, right. you know, my family friend to like go and look into this. Right, right. right. So what 40, did he do when you said that? He was, he was like, oh, I'll do my very best. Like maybe can you guys give me a, an extra day? Maybe if I need it. Like he was very okay. genuine and That's he, good. he felt, he felt really bad yeah. about what had happened. Yeah. That he was ready to be done with this. Like yeah. maybe it was on his, the, his oh, subconscious. Oh, to have been. Totally. Because yeah. like you said, the money, like he's like, eventually I'm going to have to pay this unless the owner died and this is my house now. <laughs> You know what I mean? There was probably a small part of him. I mean, hell, totally. if I was him, I'd be like, I hope this is my There was a small like, part of him that was, you know, dang. hoping this would mm -hmm. just go on mm -hmm. forever, right? Yep. So 48 hours go by. He did need an extra day. Okay. And we gave it to him. And then we came. I'm shocked. Us, he, I could never get out somewhere that quickly. Oh, he, well, he, you know, I think he was just shit scared. Like we were going to get police involved and probably, attorneys and all probably. that. So he got out. Fair. He got out. They went on some sort of payment plan. Okay. I prepped the house, got it staged, cleaned up. We got it painted. That you know. What was all the state the, of the house when you were in it? It was not bad, okay. not bad at all. Okay. It just needed some light staging stuff. Like yeah. I got, like personally got was like it some just plants. him? He didn't have roommates. It was just him. Okay. It was just him. It was a two bedroom, two bath. Okay. Um. Pretty clean. It wasn't. He didn't live like. No. You know, we needed some entry. touch up, some touch up paint. Yeah. And yeah. you know, trash hauling, well, carpet cleaning, good. all yeah. that stuff. But yeah. it was pretty easy, right? That's good. And come to think of it, so two two weeks later, we were in escrow. So we I ended up selling it for six hundred grand. Wow. That property today is worth one point three million. This is in two thousand and sixteen. Have you heard from that client? You're like, you no. should have held no, no, no. He's like, I'm in no, touch with care. my family friend, of yeah. course, too. And I'm yeah. forever on like indebted to him. Oh, totally. He gave me the shot and it just feels so good. Like, you know, that's yes. your first taste of, of yes. a deal and you're like, yep. okay, I could do yep. this. This for is the sure. first one I'm gonna deal with. Maybe the next one. It's a little easier. Yeah, hopefully like, well if i can if i can get through this and evict somebody then you know exactly yeah, yeah. so what had ended up happening with the finances with the with the payback recouping of the money yeah. is so he was on like a payment plan for like a couple months and then it it he brought it up to the our, my client brought it up to me that he filed for bankruptcy in order to forego that, that to loss. not pay so he was out you know uh, at that point it was like 
fifty-five thousand or whatever it was, yeah. which to him I'm was sure nothing. It's a drop in the bucket. It was just a principal thing. Right. Obviously, seventy grand is seventy grand. Right. But you know, you it's know, a lot of so money, that but... guy went through the ringer, right? I mean, his his like dream came to uh, an end, and you know, he has bad credit for the next seven years, and Dang. that was it. And that was like my How one of my first he? listings. The tenant was like in his mid fifties. Had been oh my was God, I'm was divorced. This is like a twenty five year old. No, 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 no. This, this was a man. He knew better. This was a full grown ass man with wow. with kids grown up, divorced. <gasps> he he knew what he was doing. Yes, he did. Totally, he finagled the system. He got a lucky break, but then you For know, a couple years, what goes around, like, great. What yeah. goes around comes, comes around, around. right? Karma's a bitch. So that was that you. one, and it was you know, it's just that's it was wild. one of those transactions where it's like I'm glad I this is the, one of the first ones. Yeah, and it, it wasn't and it went like successfully, easy, easy, right? Where you're like, oh, this is a breeze, totally. Behind the Lockbox is sponsored by Property Showcase Group. Property Showcase Group has a team of creatives, directors, producers, editors, marketing specialists, and designers that work in tandem to tell and share stories of the built environment. Whether you're looking for full service production or simply just in content creation, Property Showcase Group can help take your business to the next level. To learn more or to contact Property Showcase Group to schedule a consultation, you can find them at propertyshowcasegroup.com. That's spelled P-R-O-P-E-R-T-Y-S-H-O-W-C-A-S-E-G-R-O-U-P dot com. PropertyShowcaseGroup.com. It was crazy. Yeah. It was crazy. And it could have been a lot worse because I've totally there's been a that lot of could have been crazy. I mean, 100%. we've had some crazy stories on oh, here. Yeah. Like tenants who won't leave. I mean, I just had one. Uh, it took me a year and a half to get tenants out totally. of CRMR over here in La Jolla. Like yeah. for a year and a half. And they still tried coming after my client after week. Like it was no, it's wild. It's never. Uh, it was. It was actually a breeze. The yeah. the way we were able to get him out because usually people who are aware of the the laws right. and whatnot like right. will use it to their advantage. 100%. I mean, there was a there was a gal in Los in Brentwood who was renting a nine million dollar. Do you remember this house? It was like an Airbnb. Yep. She stayed there like legally, I guess, for five hundred and sixty five days or something. Yeah, I was like because was like she finagled the loophole yep. or whatever it yep. was. I mean. It's insane it's how insane. people there. There are people like that who, who specifically take go advantage. for this. Well, and all the the whole COVID moratorium. Totally. That was why it took us so long to get those tenants out because yeah. we went to court and the judge was like, "Look, I fully understand. You guys are in the right here, but right. like with this moratorium, like I'm not the city of San Diego. Like I, the mayor has is the one that has set this right. in place. I, L.A. I, for all I know, theirs is still going. Like they it had extended be. it again when ours didn't. Thank right. goodness." But it was, yeah, there was nothing we could do. I mean, people people were like really in dire need during totally. COVID of like having tenants just like take full advantage. Like it was, it was, it was, it was a terrible heard time. so many horror stories. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. So crazy. It was, and nothing would evict people. I don't even like, well, yeah. didn't they say something that it was like a health and safety thing like basically there has to be a meth lab on the property in Some, order for something that like something that. insane for them to be able to be like but anything and... anything other than that it was like almost yeah. impossible to yeah. evict a tenant yeah so i remember wild. representing buyers and they were for inv- for investments mm-hmm. and they're like like some did it. a lot of times it would come with the tenant in place and totally and then you have so no many con- of you have no like, control no thanks i no mean thanks. california is is not landlord friendly no so it's, no, it's you know and covid just made it a hell of a lot worse yeah it did so it did. Luckily, we still have people buying investment properties, but yeah, and there are good tenants too, sure. like that have For you know sure. good morals and values. Yes, and, yes. but there are also and, some people that. that and don't. on the flip side, I have he- heard so many horror stories of like scumbag landlords who, you know, that cap of ten percent every year they were raising it like totally. ten on the do- and it's like, okay, guys, like the cost yeah. of living here. I mean, as we know, we're like of the most expensive city right now, so like. The cost of living is insane. Yeah. And then to have all that on, anyway, yeah. we could go off on tangent server. That's wild. It was a crazy story. That is wild. But it was a, it was a great experience. 100%, and, uh, especially for your first one. Just like, throw me, throw me in. Throw me in. Exactly. Throw, put me in, coach. Exactly. Anyway. So it was good. Uh, okay. It was a fun one. You were telling me, was it an open house story? I do have an open house story. Okay. I have a few. Okay. This one. In particular, got my, a good my one. my blood boiling. <gasps> Ooh, do yeah. tell. Yeah. Okay. So I had a, I had a listing in Carmel Valley in my in my parents' neighborhood. Okay. It was like a referral from a uh, a family friend too. Okay. And I was doing, and this is like when the rates were like pretty decently low. They weren't okay. like two percent, but they were like okay. four ish. They were on the After rise. After COVID. 
It was after COVID. Okay, well, like, in the middle of COVID or in whatever. In the middle, when, Like in the last year or two. Okay. Total, okay. Uh, two years ago. Okay. So it was busier than ever. I okay. mean, the first open house and I obviously like stirred the pot. Did it oh coming God. soon? Carmel Valley, some of those were selling like a insane. million over us. It totally. Insane. The I corner think. house still holds the um, record. record in that neighborhood. And I'm just like, they bought at the at the peak. And then rates went to 8% in yep. a matter of like four months. Yep. It was crazy. Yep. So it actually ended up taking me like six months to sell that house because okay. we had an escrow and then there were some issues and then rates went up. Market and changed overnight. They were like, we still think our house is worth this. And it, yeah. you know, it was it was a crazy transaction. Yeah, because we were trying to get then everybody to understand that the market had changed overnight. Totally. And sellers were like, no, my house is worth more. And buyers yeah, it's like, like my neighbor sold that. my neighbor sold that. I said, this yeah, that is today's a different ago. day. That was a month ago, a month ago even. And it was like, it was terrible. Yeah, I mean, it's like yeah. it was really tough to like. Yeah work that into sure. to the conversation for sure but anyway my, my open house that saturday was the first day of showings okay we went live on friday started doing uh showings at the open house okay there was 150 people at my open house that day on the saturday and then there was okay. another 100 on the sunday so 250 people through the weekend wow but anyway it was it was an it was a madhouse i didn't have anyone my team come help i kind of wanted to like sure just you know capitalize on right. the first day right and so i had left the sliding door open but the screen was closed okay okay and there was this one family there was six families in here at, at once right okay. but there was this these kids that were like running around in circles going through the kitchen then through the, the living room and, and the, the family parents room. are not saying anything well the parents are upset no they didn't care just running what the the mother was upstairs with the brother uh with the daughter and the brother was downstairs alone just <laughs> running laps like it was track and field in in this oh carmel valley listing right and i didn't say anything i was like be careful running around round around and like the writing was on the wall the screen was okay. closed okay. thank god it wasn't the glass and all of a sudden oh, i'm talking to someone else and i just i hear bah! and i'm like oh shit so i like i go to the section where i knew it was and the kid had run full force into the the screen it was like the screen not the glass right and instantly he like got off and like started laughing. Like my first thought was it like, kind are of you like okay? bounced him back a little bit. Totally. Right? He was okay. totally fine. I was okay. like, but I, uh, my focus was on him. Of so course. I was like, are, are you okay? And yeah. he's like laughing. Starts running around again. Right. What I look at this. this I look at, oh my God. I look at the screen and it was like, you know, the screens are, are metal, right? Yes. The screen was halfway off the track, but the metal was Bent. completely broken. And I couldn't, like, when I tried to open it, and this is an open house, like, I wanted it to, I closed it just because for flies and, like, let people yeah, on their own fresh air leisure to in, open it. But, like, it. right, exactly. So he had totally broken Was this the house owner-occupied or was it staged in a it was It was owner-occupied. It was staged, but it was owner-occupied. Great. So the sellers are coming home. Totally. Right? So this is my issue now that I have to of deal course. with. Sure, we have e &O and all that. Right. Whatever. Right. So I try, I, you know, I, I wasn't going to make a big deal about it, but. It wouldn't open. Mm -mm. I like physically like the only way for people to go outside and check outside was to go around through the French doors or through the so garage. Not, not only did, is it broken now, and you're probably going to pay for it. I, I don't know how your sellers were. Some sellers are like, no, 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 it's okay. Like they understand the risk. Sure. Others are like pissed and you know, I couldn't whatever. open the door. Wait, they can't even get it now. They can't Everyone even like see the house. People cannot come in and out. Like, oh my god, it was terrible, anyway, right? So I was yeah. fuming. So I'd I went. Too. I grabbed the mom and I was like, hey, listen, I just want to let you know, like. Your kid's fine. He ran full force into the screen. He's doing fine. You could see him. Like, she's like, oh, yeah, he's, I see him. He's still doing, he's still laps, doing laps back laps, over here. Okay? I don't know what you bet him. Yeah. And I was like, but, you know, as much as I hate doing this, like, he he broke the screen. I can't even open this. Like, I'm going to have to right. get this repaired. Right. She And she looks at me. She's like, that's not my issue. And I said... What, what, what do you what do you mean that's not your, your little issue? terrorist is the one that just went through the screen what so and, and then so we were kind of <laughs> and then and then she just starts walking out right and like my blood, oh yeah now she's like i'm getting a lot of here boiling and this is like a a carmel valley person this isn't like you and know also, we're not you in a have, bad area you have a child like you would not i didn't at the your... time but okay, but you still wouldn't now let your kid do that totally no. so so she just was walking away and i go i follow her and i said excuse me ma'am if i had a kid and I was going through open houses with my kids, yeah. and he ran through a a, a, a fence or whatever, a, yeah, a screen, screen or broke and something. broke it. I would feel responsible, right? And I would, you know, have remorse at least. Of course, like don't pay for it. That's fine. Just like, or at least offer, and you could have been like, "It's okay. I just want to exactly. let you know. Can you please have your child? He needs to wait outside or whatever. Totally. Like, you know, totally. This is somebody's home. 
she goes she she turns around she says because this is when it the market started getting tough yeah because the rates had just started correcting i right. had the listing for two months we fell out of escrow once anyway God, she said what did she say she said i know this is this i know this is a really terrible time for you agents and like i know you guys are going through a hard time but but so are we and you know what i'm sorry i'm sorry this happened turned around and started walking off and i'm like I was like, I could not believe. Listen, it's a two two hundred fifty dollars, three hundred dollars fix, but like I was. It's the audacity. Fuming. Yes. Fuming. Called like my business partner. I called my mom. I was like, she's what like, just do? relax, just relax. Oh, I was yeah. like, so I pissed. Been. Oh, so would I? There was I an hour been. left in the open house, and I'd like calm myself. I was like, you gotta like get it oh, together. Totally. But like, totally. This is the. I was just like, I could life. not believe that it happened. I know. Forty five minutes go by, I get a phone call, and it's the lady. She says, hey, Josh, it's, I, I forgot her name. Anita, hey, whatever. Josh, it's yeah. Anita. It's like, hi, Anita, how can I help you? She's like, I just wanted to say that I am so, so sorry for the way I, I reacted. Wow. My kids were being, her words, my kids were being assholes. And I'll agree with you. And maybe. I could not, I could not control them. And when I got home, I had time to reflect and it, it sat down and I realized what had happened and how I reacted. And you let me know how much it cost. Wow. I'll Venmo you. I said, you know what? I really appreciate that. I wow. really, really appreciate that. Like means I means a lot. This, I did not see this coming. No, I love that. I didn't this either. Has a good ending. Totally good ending. That kid was fine. Happened. She much. ended up. It was like two hundred bucks. She she fixed it. You it know, wasn't a big deal. But like the fact that she like yes. and and it just shows right. Like when when you're in a heated space, yep. you need to like calm down. Hundred percent. Take time. Yep. You know. This and what I was gonna say to that point. Nine times out of 10, it is not about us. Totally. Meaning the other person. So like when 100%. someone reacts to you in a certain way, and again, in dealing with sales and dealing with the public or totally. when someone is super rude to you, we don't know. Again, we're still in the middle of COVID. Yeah. Times are a little trying right now. Totally. And like, we don't know what people are going through. Maybe she was a single mom and like literally her kid is... I don't know, just on one and like totally. she just doesn't know how to do it. Maybe she's going through a divorce. Maybe her dad just like you don't You don't know, know the circumstances you don't people know. Are. And that could have just been the straw that broke the camel's back. Now, she still should have been watching her children. Totally. Like you go totally. into someone else's home, you do not act that way. Like, yeah. oh my God, my parents would have put me over their knee. Oh my God. Like, my mom would have taken me oh, by my ear. Oh, and drug me. I mean, I would have got the look the and I would have been like, oh my God, I'm sorry. Yeah, like, exactly. you know, I'm still a little afraid of my parents. And so to this day, and I'm 40. So, you know, it's like, but I I love that she called you back though. Totally. Like, that's, it made that's my day. I'm like, yes. you know what? Like this just shows like, you know, 100%. when you settle down and you realize what happened yes. and yes. it went a long way. So that's I was, I was appreciative. Awesome. Oh, I love and that. she, and then she ended up saying, she's like, oh, and I actually know the CEO of your company. I worked with him at Goldman Sachs. I was like, oh, that's not, we had like a conversation. Which and, is great. Which is amazing. And it, it ended, it ended yep. really well. Yeah. But and it was just. become a client one day. You never know. Yeah, you never know. Yeah. But it was just, it was, it was crazy. I just, the writing was on the wall, right? I probably should have just left it open. I mean, it was better that. Okay. I, note to self for all of us agents. Don't uh, close screens. Just don't leave close the screen. Just, just leave, leave the it, door Especially open. when their kids, yeah. kids in there. Yeah. Yeah. People, they're going to take it, you know, they're going to run right it's into true. it. It's so, true. Oh it was God, crazy. It's wild. Yeah. Okay. What time is it? Max, how much time do we have? Five minute warning? Okay. I want to hear another story, but I also want to play a game because I think this might incite some stories from you. Sure. Are you cool with that? Of course. Okay. So this is Cam's job, but she's not here. Sad we miss her. Oh. So we play a little game. <clears throat> it's called Punch List because okay. we hit you with three questions. Okay. Yeah. And just first thing that comes to your mind, Okay. What is the craziest or pettiest thing that's ever killed or almost killed one of your deals? Huh. We've had some hilariously stupid answers. A, a microwave wasn't working. It's always like someone said a refrigerator 100%. seal. Like, you know, I remember, seeing, like, I remember yeah. seeing that one. Yeah, yeah. And you're it like, was a microwave. What? I was like, hey, I'm going to pay for the microwave. I'm going to go to Home <laughs> okay. right now. And Almost it wasn't even about it wasn't about that. No. It was just it was it's the, the ego. Principle, it's always ego. And so many times agents sit in that chair and they're like, my seller or my buyer did not want me to pay for it. Right. And I was like, because no, we call it buying the deal. Like, yeah. I'm like, no, bro. Totally. I'm going to Home Depot right now and I'm buy you a new washer and yeah, dryer. You're going like, to have it in, in an hour. For a $5 million listing or 20, whatever. Yeah, and it wasn't a five, but still. It doesn't matter. It was like, like the, when it comes to the cost of everything, especially if you've totally. been in the deal a long time, you're like, you know what? Amazon, it's coming to your house. I mean, it's just the the things we come it's across and the, the, the yeah. clients that you, yeah. you just, 
It's just yeah. crazy. <laughs> yeah. Sometimes it's super smooth and other times it is like they will kill the deal for yeah. 50 bucks. Oh, 100%. You know what I mean? Anyway, yeah. what is your biggest pet peeve? This oh could be God. in life. Biggest pet peeve? Life, business, yeah. Hmm. Terrorist kids running through open houses and breaking screen doors. I mean, I do it myself, <laughs> but it's a pet. You know how like- Oh, you know, this just is like, self-aware. It is. What is it? it? Is. What is it's it? It's just like, it's my pet peeve about the, the industry that we're in, about okay. how people, we have to post about our whole day, right? Yeah, it's like- Okay, the secret. Well, I, I do sometimes. I don't always, but it's for content, right? So it's like- I am trying to get better. Max, everyone knows Max here. Yeah. His whole team is like, the people want to hear from you. And I'm like- And that's why I do it, I right? Just, to I stay know. top of mind. But it's I like, the, like I, I look, I follow like a lot of- it just feels like disingenuous. Totally. You know? Is that the right word? But it's like, you think about it, right? Like <laughs> doctors, doctors see Not 15 genuine. patients a day, right? You would never see a doctor go in his story. We just and talked say, about this a couple of weeks ago. Sir, yes. well, I saw three patients. I did a tonsillectomy yeah. and I, you know, saw seven and but I followed up with this one. To our defense, though. Yeah. It's if if we're not staying top of mind, totally. there are so many of us. So it's not a bad thing. You no, know what I mean? Sure. And like, if anything, you, Brie, um, me, whoever, like yeah. of our like personalities, right. we very much like make fun of ourselves or totally. like we're, we're very like the reels that the reels that you and Brie, Brie Ariano, she was on that. Shout show out Brie. We love you, Brie. Um, the reels you guys post are freaking hysterical. Yeah, like, we have fun It's with that it. kind of stuff. You know what totally. I mean? And like sometimes- People do need to know, you know what I mean? It feels, I struggle with that whole, you know, humble brag, right? But like 100%. people, they do need to know oh, what we're up to. And you're right. Like, we're in or, sales. Or, or, or wins. We're in sales. It's not like we just show up and like we have 15 right. patients that we're going to see. Right. I right. think it might just be, cancer, my pet peeve might be with like a few people then. It's not just in it's general. A few, it's a few. It's, it's a, a few, few people uh -huh. that do the same thing. And uh -huh. I'm like. Uh -huh. and the unfollow or yeah. or something. Mute something, please. I know. I know. I hear you there. Okay, if you could be anything other than a real estate agent, what would you be and why? Wow, I would love to be a professional athlete. What sport? In something tennis. Tennis. Okay. I'm a competitive tennis player, yeah. so I would love to. Yeah. I mean, if I was taller and not Jewish, I would be a basketball player. <laughs> um, you know, taller my my ver Jewish. my my vertical jump is like maybe this uh, on the tennis same. court. It's a little bit bigger. Yeah, but. yeah, yeah. You can. So I mean, in a perfect world, I'd love to be. Court. A pro basketball player, but that's super. Cool. I had more of a that chance you like, tennis. You love basketball as well. That's I love basketball. Yeah, yeah, yep. and football. But All yeah, sports. tennis. Sports. I think it would be really cool. My dad, my dad was a pro for for a while. I think I like six know months. Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. while while you, I think he was the only doctor who was actually a professional tennis player, which is pretty cool. That's amazing. So I would He's love to an do that. Orthodontist. He's a ENT, head and neck surgeon at Scripps Why Clinic. Do I think he did dentistry. I do have a cousin who's an orthodontist. Maybe I don't know. Maybe and that was it. All right. Shout out to Dr. Dad. Anyway. Shout out, Doc. Doc. <laughs> Love you, Pops. Doc Galis. That's amazing. Yeah. That'd be super cool. Do you it know would what be I said? cool. What? A country singer. Really? I could so see you with you a guitar could, could and you? like a cowboy hat. Country, you? right? You yeah, said co country. Yeah. I like actually I could just so a singer see that. in general. Like I totally wish Do I Do you ever, sing? No. Can you give us a little? No, absolutely, absolutely not. Come on. I'm not gonna. No, these these pick up everything. So we're not gonna. <laughs> yeah. we're not gonna I, I I've been told I have a podcast voice. I do uh, not have a singing. Voice, okay. Well, when the, when the cameras are off, we're gonna we're gonna do a little duo. Oh, maybe a reba. Shot. Maybe next reba on Wednesday no. we'll do like no. A little, you know. Oh, for, for when we're out on caravan, perhaps. Okay. Or, okay. Okay. Maybe we'll do a reel. Or okay, something. we'll do a fun reel, and it'll perfect. It'll. I'll make a fool of myself. Like, we'll, we'll I put do auto, every week. We'll put auto tune on it. I mean, you have all the, the bells like, and oh whistles here. She sounds so good. Okay. It's like Taylor Swift. Like You have the production team to do it, right? <laughs> I do. He's sitting right here. <laughs> Can you make me sound better than that, Max? He says Perfect. Yes. He says okay. yes. Okay, so, next anyway. Wednesday, right. Caravan. Yeah, Check fair. us out. Fair, fair, fair. <laughs> what? Auto tune. Auto -tune. Yeah, I told See, you already you. knows. Auto -tune. He's like, yeah, no, you're, you're, exactly. you're going to need auto tune. Anyway, thank you so much for being thank here. Thank you for having me. Yes. I'm so glad that we finally did this. Yeah. And if you come up with more stories, which I know you already have more, we'll have to have you back on. Totally. So, all right. Thanks, bud. My pleasure. All right, guys. Thank you so much for joining us. We'll see you next week. Bye. Thanks for listening. Behind the Lockbox is produced and edited by Property Showcase Group. If you like this podcast, please share it with your friends. Don't forget to subscribe, rate, or review this podcast. Thanks for your support. See you next week.